Good afternoon traders and welcome to this week's weekly market analysis class, Monday the 23rd of April. As always, please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay, let's have a look at what's uh, on the agenda for this week. We'll have a look at a brief look at what's happened last week. Let's kick off with uh, the US dollar. Um, a strong week for the US dollar last week, uh, largely on the results of good retail sales. Uh, the geopolitical tensions eased somewhat, even that it, after that initial uh, strike uh, with Syria, there was no further progression. Uh, on that, so that's helped ease off the tension. There wasn't much mention of China uh, during the week, so the US dollar uh, consequently had a, it was all pro US dollar um, type geopolitical situations there. Uh, the other one was basically the rest of the world or the global data was soft, so the US dollar was able to make ground against uh, most of the other currency pairs. So overall, for the US dollar, it was a good week. This week we are a little bit light on data and what we have for us this particular week is we have oil, uh, inventories, consumer confidence number and the GDP numbers towards the end of the week. So not a, a huge week in terms of uh, data for the US dollar, so probably going to lie more on the low key this particular week uh, with US pairs. If we move along, let's focus now on the euro. Uh, basically ended the week on a low ahead of this week's monetary policy uh, announcements and rate announcements which are due, which I'm highlighting right now. So they're due on Thursday, where particularly at this stage, we don't expect that the ECB to single signal an end to their QE program and they're also not looking at raising rates anytime soon as well. So Specifically, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking to see if the delivery of the message is slightly more favored towards uh, the hawkish nature or is it a more dovish tone uh, and the words that they choose in terms of their monetary policies. We know that uh, Mr. Draghi has said they were quite happy to continue with their QE program um, and he has indicated uh, once or twice that perhaps uh, they may be starting to look to ease it or raise interest rates sooner rather than later. Those were past comments, so let's see if any of that information is reiterated uh, this week and uh, that may give the euro a little bit of direction. Japan is uh, another nation which is having a monetary policy rate uh, and rate decision and announcement. Uh, whilst there are no changes on the radar here, uh, we are uh, very interested to see any comments on their, Q, on their QE program and how they feel about their current inflation levels. So that's probably the gist of it. That's what we're going to look for on uh, from the Bank of Japan. Uh, this information is coming out on Friday as usual. They do not specify a specific time of release so just look out for it. Historically it seems to come out around about the one o'clock Sydney time. Lastly locally uh, our Aussie dollar had a poor finish to the week last week losing significant ground on the US with our US uh, so with our Aussie USD dropping about 120 pips on the on the last two days, Thursday, Friday, uh, a light week ahead this week. We've really only CPI data uh, due. 76.50 is the next key level that we will be watching, and the question is, will it hold, and will we bounce from that, or will it break through, and then that pretty much puts onto the radar uh, the 75 level. Um, let me jump into our charts and we'll analyze it uh, technically a little bit uh, with a little bit more detail. If anyone has any questions at this stage, please paste them in, type them in. I will address them as we go along. Let's uh, see what the markets have in store for us this week and let's see if we can identify any favorable uh, opportunities with high probability in our favor. Okay, so let me bring forward my charts, kick it off with the Aussie dollar. And last week I started to, to look at uh, this particular chat falling channel and I was looking to see if we would get an opportunity up around there 
and unfortunately it really didn't come as you can see we were heading there but then this is Thursday this is Friday we've come all the way back down sometimes this can be frustrating okay but uh, there was no trade so there was nothing that we can do about that one the 7650 level that I just mentioned falls here and the question mark is going to be will this hold and will this bounce forward um, look if you really wanted to attempt a trade at the 7650 level I would uh, just by the shape of these candles I don't think I'm going to be able to get it on a daily candle so I could possibly jump to a four hour chart so let's analyze that first let me just drop down a time division to a four hour time frame let me zoom out a little bit and all of a sudden it looks a little bit clearer this is the region that I'm particularly have an interest in which is roughly the 7650 level we can see that there was some shoot off already three times in fact so if we would get a candle down here say like that make it like this and there something of that nature then we could possibly try and trade it and that would be based on a four hour time frame as you can see here I'm in a four hour time frame so for those of you who would be looking for that this may even happen tonight okay we just need to to see if we can get the right candle pattern it hasn't happened yet there was an inside candle there those two um, however I don't feel that that was at the correct level so it wouldn't have been valid so that's option number one if somebody's trying to get a bounce off this 7650 level uh, be patient don't trade it just simply because you're at that level try and find the price action confirmation option number one if I now move to my daily chart and let me zoom in a little bit more let me get rid of this line which I've just drawn in the next logical level for me is somewhere down here and I would feel a lot more comfortable about this trade than the other one because it's a really nice uh, falling channel okay with a number of confirmed touches on the bottom side and this would be touch number four uh, so should I get the price action that I'm looking for over here for example something like that then definitely I would be happy to trade off that particular level as such this would be my preferred option if I really wanted to trigger a trade I would uh, drop into a four hour time frame and I would look for that option on that flat 7650 line any questions on the Aussie US dollar at this particular stage I cannot see any other option um, from a technical point and these are the ones with the highest probability we all good with this one we all understand what our game plan is for our Aussie dollar yes we do thank you very much okay let's move on let's have a look at our euro usd okay very clear what i've been tracking let me just zoom in a bit more so we can see it a bit clearer uh, i believe last week i was trying to catch the trade up the top we did get an inside candle over here those two there I, I didn't call it out because I didn't feel it was high enough we didn't get into that line so it didn't happen we are here again now and what we can look for is the trade back up in that direction okay now important to know that this bottom line I still got a little bit of play in this I can I've still got a little bit of flexibility I'm happy to even uh, just to show you the extremities I could I could go as far as about there okay about there for example which means you can see that, that I'm still there's a little bit of daylight I can bring that down um, however I can also push it up more and try and get a trade in there if the price action happens to follow so for example if you look at the two current candles right now 
if they ended up staying that way, technically that's an inside candle, it's on the line and that would be valid, okay? So when you do any kind of pattern trading or pattern analysis, you need to be flexible in the way that uh, you adjust your lines, okay? So at the moment, I've got it drawn in there, but I'm quite happy to bring it down a little bit and adjust it to the level that I need to, um, to get the trade that I'm looking for. Now, it's not really, I'm not fudging it or I'm not making it up as, as what we could say, um, because I'm still waiting for a price action reversal, I'm still waiting for that confirmation in any case before I trigger off a trade, which just allows me to set my lines in and lock them in a little bit better. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Because one of the most commonly asked questions that I often get is, how do you know where you place your line? Because my line looks a little bit different to yours, etc., etc. Look, it's a, a question of experience, how long you've been doing it is definitely going to assist you but uh, you have to be I adjust my lines according to the candle patterns that I'm looking for okay the candle pattern is actually the signal that the market may reverse so if I can fit that candle pattern into an existing line well then that's like a, a double confirmation makes the probability of my trade slightly higher okay so euro USD pretty straightforward we're still in this converging uh, mode. I would be interested in finding the trade right there to push that way. The other option for it would be a breakout trade, and what you would need in that case is a really nice candle on the downside. I'd want to clear that level, okay, and then basically as soon as the next candle starts, you would trade it in this direction. All right, uh, I'm not breakout trading at this present time, so this is one that I, if it does happen and you are a breakout trader yourself, fantastic. Uh, if it's in your rules, go for it. It's, uh, I'm not trading breakouts myself right now, so I don't tend to call these ones out, but I am highlighting it for any of those of you who are interested in that type of trade. All right, that's the Euro USD. Let's move along, let's have a look at uh, the US Yen. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've marked in that region where we were feeling, will this act as resistance now? I recall saying that if I do get a setup, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it on its individual merit and see if, uh, if, it's worth, if I like it and I'll make it a daily call. Now, there was no setup. This is one of the things on the on the pro uh, reasons that I like price action trading is that um, sometimes it, when I'm hesitant on a trade, it won't give me a signal to enter, which kind of protects me from entering the trade. The downside is that sometimes uh, the trade, it's a good level, but I don't get an entry and I don't end up getting a trade. But it's a compromise which I'm happy to, to take. It just means I trigger a little bit less trades than what other people may trigger. So at the moment, looking at this, it looks like the level is getting away from us. What could happen is we could end up with a candle that looks like this and then maybe tomorrow as an inside candle. And then if I take this level here and bring it all the way across there, and that line's a bit crooked, but you can see that it's on there, then possibly I could trade it in this direction, okay? Where I'm saying that a previous support is now acting as resistance for the market. So let I, I need to see it play out. If it does play out and I like it, I will make it a daily call chart. Um, at this stage, I just get the feeling, I, I actually not sure if it's going to break through so let me just draw this line so that I remember this is a second line so what I'm interested in is seeing how the market behaves at this particular level all right so will I get price action right there to shoot in this direction because previously it has acted as support at that level Okay, if I zoom out across this way, the level is more in the gray area which I've highlighted. So I'll just leave that in and let's just see how it goes. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about?
talking about. Someone's asking me to look at a four hour chart. Give me one moment. I will zoom in and I'll check it. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit more so I can see. On a four hour chart right now, there is an inside candle here, but it's not at the level which I would be interested in trading it. So uh, I'm not willing to take a trade off these two candles over here. Okay, so I'll still, I'm happy with this blue line. Let's see if I can get it to set up on that blue line. All right, that's pretty much it. If you're sometimes if you're a little bit indecisive, uh, check your trading rules. If your trading rules don't mention anything about that particular setup, well then sometimes it's best to just uh, not not execute uh, in those instances. All right, let's have a look at the GBP USD. All right, four consecutive days net negative on Friday. So all that gain that was made was lost last week. Uh, we did have a, a nice breaking candle there, okay? Uh, and like I said, I, I don't trade the breaking candle these days anymore, but if you did, you would have got stopped out on this one because the aim is that you're aiming to continue with the momentum. It started off good and then basically just pulled all the way back down. The level at which it turned around was no, not necessarily anything significant. I did notice this this morning. There's a level here. Okay, let me just draw a line in and jump into a four hour and let's analyze it. Let me just go into four hour chart. Let me adjust this line a bit better. Probably about there. And zoom back in. Okay. So on a daily, all I've done is I've just drawn in this level here just to see what happens here and here, okay? There is very good symmetry between that the rise up and the rise down. The symmetry is it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good, okay? So whenever I have good symmetry, um, it, it seems to be an unspoken additional factor which increases the probability. So noting that um, and also noting that if this should react up there it could come and form a head and shoulders pattern okay so in anticipation of that um, I'm interested in, in a possibly a little cheeky trade in that zone now the easiest way to pick that one off would be to drop into a four hour chart which there it is that's my four hour chart let me just get rid of that top line for a moment because it's throwing everybody off we don't need it anymore. So go into that four hour chart again as such. So let's see if we can find in here a little price action reversal pattern for us so that we can attempt to take a trade in this direction. Please note, um, I am on the four hour chart, so this could set up for us tonight. Okay, so add this to a watch list. I'm just writing this down on another piece of paper over here. GBP USD four hour. Okay, got it. All right, uh, any questions on uh, this particular chart? No? Okay, then I will move on to gold. Okay, gold. Okay, in gold, I had the top blue line trying to see what would happen if I'm catching this top high there, bringing it across. Well, nothing's happened, so let me just get rid of that line. Let me now zoom in. We have this level. We didn't get any opportunities. It, the market never came up to us to give us that entry. It's unfortunate. So what have we got right now then? Okay, I've just got a sideways market right now. What I might do is I might just draw a second line down here. Let's see if I can get it in. Through there. 
And all of a sudden now I'm catching one, two, three points up the top. I'm catching one, two, three points down the bottom. So naturally, what am I going to be interested in? I'm interested in this trade. And I'm also interested in this trade. All right. Can everybody see that? Still a daily chart. I zoom out. I've just it's very clear to me that the market is trading in this range. So let's not fight it. Should I get the setups on the on the perimeters as such? Then I would be interested in those particular trades. All right, so US yen pretty simple for us. Unfortunately, right now we are right in the middle of that channel. So let's wait and see what happens as I approach the edges. And again, just to, for anybody new in the class, I will not trade simply off the level. I still am looking for a price action reversal pattern on the edges over here and over there. Okay. All right, let's have a look at the US CAD. Okay, we spotted this rising channel last week and we were thinking maybe this would continue to go down here so that we can trade in that direction. It did not. It's moved in that direction already. So the plan does not change. I don't see anything better than what we've already got. So we are going to continue to look for a trade over here as such or over there as such all right pretty straightforward this one this is the beauty of when you draw all your lines on your charts you keep them there um, it's very easy to come back and have a look and, and continue your thought of process from where you left off okay all right so us cad that is our game plan oil Okay, we were looking at oil last week. I didn't have a pattern over there to shoot it in this direction. It was very close, but it wasn't. And now it's broken above it. So let me just get rid of these lines and let's uh, reanalyze. Okay, the top line is not confirmed yet, all right, because it's where I've only drawn it there based on the assumption that this turns around and that's an actual touch, so it's not a confirmed touch yet. However, if this moves down to as such, well, then that top level there locks in and that would be a confirmed touch. So if that should happen, and it moves down as I've just indicated well then when it reaches this line I would be interested in that trade as such the reason for the trade would just be a rising wedge now the note these two lines are not parallel uh, but it would be a rising wedge let me see if there is anything else No, nothing else. So this one stands, uh, I'll, I'll stand by that one as such. All right, so that's a WTI oil. Okay, let's have a look at the ASX 200. All right, the, the top line that we've drawn in the past is still there. So let's continue to wait. Let's see if the market comes to meet us. And let's see if the market gives us an opportunity to short on that resistance line you do get the feeling that it is going to reach us um, it's just a matter of if it continues to go a little bit sideways and reaches us at this point or if it comes there and reaches us at that point now whether we get 
a price action confirmation pattern when we reach it is a different story so let's just see what happens but the game plan on this one remains the same the chart is still on the messy side however I um, it does look okay to be able to take a trade off that line okay not much setting up for us this week this is a, a bit of a shame so let's move to the final pair for the week what do we have Kiwi dollar we got one, two, three, four consecutive days. This one's a little bit different. If I drew a line across the bottom here, let's just say I drew it here. What do we think about this bottom line, guys? Let me just put it into place where I think it's best. Would that be classified as a channel or not do you like the bottom line what do you think about it okay some people starting to answer now so just let me know if you feel it's a yes it's a channel no it's not a channel It's very interesting results here. I think we're at about 50-50. Um, I'm going to say that right now, this is not a channel. So if I, I'm going to count this as one touch, this as two touches, which is okay. But down the bottom, I've only got one touch. This one here is not it's not close enough it's not close enough so therefore if that's not a touch and that's not a touch all I've got is one two and then one so even though it looks like it what I will say is I can say it's a zone of congestion definitely so where the market's going a bit like this and when that happens if I was going to um, because it's not a channel I'm not it's difficult to try and trade off those lines um, but before you start to trade off these lines what typically you would do is you would wait for a break away from those lines or away from those lines wait for the market to pull back and then this could be a good entry point to continue downwards or vice versa in this direction to continue upward okay unfortunately we're right in the middle it's not a channel so I'm not looking at the, the trades inside as such Okay, so that basically means that for our Kiwi dollar, let me just get rid of this line here, I don't know what that is. For our Kiwi dollar uh, this week, uh, where we need to wait until we move away from that region that I'm highlighting for us. Okay. All right, let me recap uh what we've done if you have any questions that can be off topic please type them in i will address them let me kick off with the aussie dollar we said we're going to continue with this channel pattern and let's see if it meets us down the bottom if you really want to trigger a trade maybe off the four hour you might get an opportunity down here at that 7650 level euro usd it's a nice uh, converging triangle let's see if we can get the price action on this perimeter to trigger a trade for us US yen let's see what happens as we approach the blue line which is around about the 108.50 level and let's see if we get uh, a setup or not GBP USD have dropped into a four hour and I'm looking for this uh, symmetrical kind of movement upwards down we are close but we're not there yet let's see if it triggers gold we are in range we are this one is a little bit different to the kiwi one this one's got touches on both sides so let's see we can attempt to trade the the perimeters of this channel us cad we're inside a rising channel we need to wait till we get to the edges wti let's wait see if we can confirm this top 
as a turning point and then lock in the top line and look for a trade on this one towards here back into that direction. ASX 200, the, so the resistance line is good. Let's wait for the market to meet us. Finally, Kiwi dollar, we want to move away from this congestion zone before we start to look at uh, a setup. Okay, there's a couple of questions just come through. Let me have a look. First one's related to WTI. Okay, Albert, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question. Can you just rephrase your question? I, It's not making sense to me. I'll jump to another one, give you a chance to, to rephrase it. Okay, Paul's asking me about my zigzag indicator. Uh, my zigzag indicator settings are, I've, to be honest, I'm not even looking at it, but let me just get the settings and I'll tell you what they are. Indicator list, zigzag. I've got mine set to 733. Okay, so please take note. So in the inputs, well, let me change color so you can see it better. In the inputs tab over here, these are my settings, 733. And for those of you who don't know what, in, what I'm talking about, my zigzag indicator is this light line that you can see, or oh, let's go back, change colors again, is this light line that you can see going through my charts. Okay, that's my zigzag. ASX 200 question, let me just jump over to the chart first. If I put a line down the bottom, can it be a wedge? Let me zoom out a little bit to help us. So, like that. Is that what you're asking me, Dennis? I can move it around a little bit. It could be. Um, it won't. It still won't change what we are looking for right now, and which is what I'm looking for is the trade up there to down here. So the answer is yes, we could do it. Um, but what particularly? It's only going to come into play for us if, if and only if, because let's think about this. If the market goes up there, hits that line, and comes back down, then this line is the first time that we're going to get an opportunity to try and trade off it like this. So the answer is yes, it can be. Okay, at this particular point in time, um, it doesn't affect us because if the market comes down from where we currently are, then all of a sudden, I don't think that's pretty enough or it doesn't look classic enough for me to attempt to trade it there. I'm only going to be interested in trading off this level if it gets to that level because then it really makes that top line really good and then we can say, yeah, that looks better. Does that make sense? So this is why I probably haven't drawn it in. So I'm happy to leave it as such. If this top line does its job and it starts to come down, then I'll draw the bottom one and I'm going to try and take another trade if I possibly can. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Well, I'll give you an opportunity to answer that. Let me have a look at today's daily, uh, the chart of the day. Okay, here's the chart of the day. It hasn't triggered yet. It's on the verge of not triggering. Um, for those of you that didn't see it, so we're in a downtrend. This is the Aussie New Zealand, by the way. AUD NZD. Downtrend. The market's pulled back and produced this inside candle there, those two candles. And what I'm trying to do is trade the break of the inside candle downwards. 
Um, however, I got to check. I, uh, I think it already reached the top, which doesn't qualify. Let me just check. The high here is 106.6009. So it's reached equal high. It hasn't broken down yet. So what I'm talking about is the high of this candle has equaled the high of that candle. I have to be honest, in my trading rules, it says that if I break the, the top, cancel it. But if they're equal, I don't actually have anything written down on my trading rules if they're equal. So I might have to go and make up a set, another rule in my trading rules because uh, technically it hasn't broken it. So I guess that means that I'm still, my pending order is still alive. But I haven't been triggered yet. I'm trying to trigger as we break down. All right, so that's uh, today's daily call. Just wanted to show it to you, just in case you haven't seen it. Any other questions, guys? Did uh, any of you take the Euro Swiss trade last week? It closed out at one to one, which is what I said. It was 30, 30 pips, 30 pip, 30 pip stop, 30 pip target. Did anybody take that one? It's a daily call trade. It's the only trade that we've triggered in the month of uh, April, which is very surprisingly. So I'm hoping that we can get we trigger a few more, but um, that's the only one that's happened in April for us. All right, guys, look, if there's no more questions, we will wrap up for today. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to respond to you and answer them. Um, watch the daily call on a daily basis. Get your head around and different charts and different things that pop up. I um, hope you'll have a fantastic trading week. And let's call it a day. And I will speak to you all tomorrow on the daily call, or I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now.